Good morning, Joe. How are you today? I'm well. This last Tuesday of November. Imagine. <laughs> and my, what a uh, way it was to kick off the holiday season in Quincy. Yeah, what a, what a uh, what a weekend we had as a city. Uh, just remarkable. I mean, it, you can go back to last week. The, the Thanksgiving game was one of the best games in years. People couldn't leave. <laughs> it was you know, down to the last play of the game. It was a great it's game. Like, you hate to see any team lose in that situation. It was back and forth, back and forth. Uh, so congratulations to all the kids. It was a tremendous day. Then, of course, Friday night was the turning on the lights. Um, the estimates were over 3,000 people at the Hancock Adams Common. It was absolutely jammed. It was <laughs> it was awesome. You could feel the, the spirit of Christmas there. We had a nice show uh, with some music and, and, of course, turning the lights on uh you know, several generations of folks, the uh, grandparents with their grandchildren and everything in between, uh, everybody having a good time. So that was awesome. And the helicopter dropped at Paget, bringing Santa in by helicopter was also well received. Big crowds, a little breezy on Saturday, but the sun was shining. Yeah. We, uh, and then, of course, Sunday we culminate with the parade. And thank God we got it in before the rain started. <laughs> it was, was really the timing was incredible. Perfectly timed, actually. Just it as we were wrapping was. up our last extension cord, we felt the rain drop. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean it, you know, the, the target, the forecast was on target. Yeah. So once we get the last couple of days, early in the week, it didn't look good at all. But again, we think uh, all those people that were praying for good weather. And I tell you, marching the, the parade route, Joe, it was as big a crowd as I've seen in a long time. I agree, yeah. Uh, and I don't know whether that was something to do with pandemic stuff, whether it was the attraction of UMass, it was the mild weather, or a combination of all those things yep. made for a great turnout with the crowds all along the road. Yeah, it was uh, three and four deep for sure, all, the, all along. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. And I, you know, I only had one person yell out something negative, but other than that, it was a great reception. <laughs> People seemed happy. And uh, <laughs> it wouldn't have been normal if somebody didn't say something. <laughs> Because you can't please everyone. <laughs> no, that's right. I wish yeah. them a Merry Christmas, nonetheless. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah. So, really. not really. It was a tremendous weekend. Uh, people were raving about it. And I know this time of year, right through Christmas, uh, throngs of people go to the promenade. They have been pictures taken around the lights mm-hmm. to bring the kids up and walk around. It's just a wonderful thing. And, of course, you know, December 13th, we're doing a special program in front of the, the manger scene. Uh, and then December 18th, we'll be lighting the menorah mm-hmm. to start the um, season of Hanukkah. So a combination of wonderful things happening. Indeed, yeah. I know uh, Marina Bay got under the act uh, this year as well. They had their own lighting ceremony on Saturday. Um, yeah, I was out there. Um, congratulations to the business community out there. They yeah. did a great job. Uh, they had a great crowd as well. And some people forget that, you know, a lot of people visit Marina Bay, but Marina Bay is a the neighborhood. <laughs> There's a lot of people that live out there. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I, you could see the excitement with the, the lighting of all the buildings along the boardwalk and the railing. And they had a floating tree out with the boats uh, all lit up. It was uh, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, and there's more. There's Safford Park has a tree lighting coming up. Uh, there's the General's uh, Bridge Tree Ceremony this Sunday as well. So lots happening still. Yeah, a number of neighbors. Adam Shaw does one. I think yep. Housenek did theirs um, Sunday night. Um, you, you mentioned Safford Park. Yep. What's Quincy over in... Uh, the Granite Workers Memorial is one coming up. Oh. Um, yeah, this Sunday's a little special, you know, and remind people about that show and that um, at the General's Bridge and Park. We did it last year for the first time. So we dedicate a tree to those who are currently serving in the military. Mm-hmm. So we invite families to come down and write the, the name of their loved one who's serving on a ribbon, and we hang the ribbons on the tree. We decorate the tree with those ribbons with the anticipation um, that they'll be coming home. Perhaps they won't be home for the Christmas season or holidays, but that they'll be coming home safe at some point. Um, so we we certainly want to remind people about that event. Um, it's a it's a neat one. It really is. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, Thursday evening, the Tis the Season uh, Symphony and Song Concert by the Quincy Symphony at Quincy High School. Yeah, if the parade didn't put you in the spirit, <laughs> the concert will put you in the spirit. That's for, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, Yuichi uh, and the entire. Quincy Symphony, remarkable, and of course a number of our musicians on staff in the school department, yep. a number of students participate. It's really, really a great event. I, uh, I know they always get a good crowd, but there's probably a few tickets still available. Quincy High Thursday night, 7 o'clock, I believe, Joe. That's correct, yeah, and the proceeds benefit the music programs in the school system, so it's a great cause as well. Absolutely. 
Can we talk a little bit, Mayor, about the uh, public safety uh, meetings that were held yesterday regarding the incident at the Wollaston T Station a couple of weeks ago? And I know there's a lot of concern about that in the community. Well, there's certainly uh, some concern. There's certainly interest in getting information on what was going on, uh, particularly when you have language barriers uh, with some of our some of our immigrant community. And so I thought the you know the morning event was at the Faith Lutheran on Hancock Street. Um, I'm not sure it's Faith Lutheran, but it's I think it's Wallace you know, and it's Lutheran. Yeah, Wallace and Lutheran. Thank you. Right next to the Fenner House. Yep. Been to that uh, senior program a number of times in the in the basement of that church. And uh, Taki Chan coordinated that meeting with Philip Chong and Quincy Asian Resources, and of course passed the law there at the church. And uh, information was shared. District Attorney Morrissey gave a good explanation. The T from the, I mean, the chief from the T, the ch- obviously the Quincy chief, were there to speak about the incident, the steps that were taken, and to some degree what go- what happens going forward. Um, and uh, I thought it was a good meeting to share that information. Then, of course, Nina Leanne, Councilor Lodge what needed the meeting uh, later in the day, early evening, at 80 Clay Street, Tobin Towers, mm-hmm. um, particularly to the people of that building, but it was open to the public. People came from, from the neighborhood surrounding that area. And again, a similar thing, people looking for answers. And um, what what I reminded uh, folks at both of those meetings was that while many communities were going the other way over the last several years, we've continued to add police personnel we're up to a funded 185 patrolmen. I know we've talked about it on the show, Joe. Yep. Uh, it was 144 when I took office. There were no canines left when I took office. The drug unit we've tripled since I've taken office. So, um, you know, and the result of that is what we saw that this horrific act of violence, um, despicable act of violence, and how anyone could do this to another human being is beyond my thinking. Uh, but having said that. The Quincy police had this guy behind bars within 16 hours of the incident. Remarkable police work. And that's why we need to have a, a robust force, well-trained, with all the tools necessary. And I certainly uh, thank the MBTA Transit Police for their help in all of it as well. So that was very important to, to remind people of. And there's another thing that is, has been very kept quiet, Joe, and it was at the interest of the police department themselves. They were so moved by what occurred to that woman that at the police station, they took a collection up Hmm. amongst the officers and raised significant money towards the woman's bills related to her medical bills based Hmm. on this incident. I mean, that's the kind of police department we have. People are so quick to criticize all the time. It drives me crazy. Uh, We have incredibly trained, very professional, and officers with empathy for the community they serve. They serve with compassion and dedication, and I can't say enough about it. And they wanted no publicity about it. They refused to have anything in the newspapers or on the TV about it. And that's that's true charity, Joe. Mm. Also, another important piece of information I think that came out was to report anything suspicious that happens because there was an incident 10 minutes prior um, where a woman was almost abducted. By this, that's correct. Potentially by the same individual. I mean, you, you don't want to speculate as to what could have happened. However, if officers had responded to that first incident, you know, hope maybe it would have prevented the second incident. Yeah, we, so uh, you say the officer had responded. If somebody had called right. the police station, which would have tripped the officer to respond, absolutely, right. it could have been a different outcome, but we don't know for sure. Right. Right. And in and, and my estimation, based on this this person, uh, I want to say animal, that's not, but that's not very kind, this person... Um, it would have happened at some point. I'm convinced of based mm-hmm. on, mm-hmm. Um, you know, his his sickness, um, and he and was pointed out at the meetings by the district attorney. Uh, he's been held without bail. It was such a vicious act of violence mm-hmm. that, um, you know, the judge would not release him on bail. So, you know, with with ju- obviously he deserves uh, justice, um, but my guess is he's going to be going away for a long, long time, and and he deserves that. So see something say something it sounds so simple but it's so that's important. exactly right yeah. yeah i mean we everyone's busy in their life and just move on and but you know it, it, it's not only you say something occurred there uh the attempt on the other woman but you know the other thing the chief pointed out rather astutely was you know people heading to the tea station they got their heads down mm-hmm. they're texting they're looking at their phone they've got headphones on mm-hmm. they forget the the uh, the surroundings if you will paying attention to what's around and and you know there's certain times of the day when there's not many people around and that's that's a vulnerable time in a sense that 
that's when people would act um, someone like this. They wouldn't do it with people around. So right. just remind people to be aware of your surroundings at all times as well. Sure. Mayor, this morning, uh, well, special event happening for the folks at Quincy Community Action Programs over in uh, southwest Quincy. Yes, uh, Beth Ann Strollo and, and the entire staff and board of directors of QCAP um, done a nice job uh, with the food pantry location for southwest Quincy. They used to rent the space, which was really inadequate in that area, and they purchased the building and dedicated that entire space to uh, serving the, the needs and of the poor, working for folks that may just, uh, you know, have some challenges at different times. They do a great job, Quincy Community Action. So they're, they're naming the building in honor of Paul Conley, who's been a longtime member of the board, Quincy Community Action, also very active in the community, a Vietnam vet, uh, a great guy. So a uh, nice program this morning. I'm looking forward to catching up with QCAP and celebrating with them. Yeah, I know that uh, the city gave uh, $300,000 in uh, the federal COVID relief money to help that project. Indeed, and uh, that's the kind of thing that, you know, we don't necessarily talk about all the things that went on during COVID in the ARPA, but, you know, one of the first things we did was reach out to all the food pantries and provided them each a grant uh, immediately because we knew, we, well, we didn't know what was coming with the pandemic, mm-hmm. honestly, Joe, but we thought that there'd be more of a strain on the food pantry. So we immediately dealt with them right up front, and then, of course, it led to uh, further funding that we use federal money for to assist them with the new permanent location that uh, is better suited for serving the people of Southwest Quincy. Sure. Next time we talk, uh, Mayor, it'll be December. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get my, I got to get that and get my Christmas stuff up. I, I always wait till the coldest day of the year. I think. <laughs> <laughs> and we've had some good mild weather. I haven't taken advantage of it yet. No, yeah, well, you might want to wait till after tomorrow because we have a big wind rainstorm coming. So after yeah. that, you should be good. <laughs> well, better than, better than the white stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mayor. Thanks, Joe. Bye-bye. <laughs>